Hey guys, it's Hunt for Games, and you are about to witness the largest gap in party invites and usefulness that I, I think honestly exists in Final Fantasy XI. Tell me if you think I'm wrong, but having leveled both of these two myself, I'm pretty confident that these are the yin and yang of party invites, which which could almost be a pun, because I'm talking about Bard and Summoner, and Summoner wears the yin yang rope, and it's a joke, it's, it's a bad joke. Moving on though, this is specifically a continuation of the Artifact series, and both of these jobs are certainly unique in that department. I'll get to why in a little bit, but let's kick it off with Bard and then move on to one of my all-time favorite jobs, and uh, essentially first level 75. So Bard is, is the cool guy at work, it's the first kid picked for dodgeball, it's the hot chick that rejects you but somehow makes you feel better about yourself while she does it. Everyone wants a Bard in their party, and if they have one they debate whether or not they could use another one. You always laugh at a barge jokes, and if there was ever actually a job that had enough pull in a party to get you kicked from that party just for pissing them off, it was Bard. Do not piss off the Bard. For any of you that have stumbled upon this video purely to listen to the beautiful sounds of my voice, but didn't actually play Final Fantasy XI, Bard was the ultimate buffing job, singing beautiful sounds of victory and success that led to some of the best leveling experiences that you could find. They were also extremely rare, probably because they were boring as hell to play. I mean, seriously, you could only have two active songs at a time, meaning you'd wander up between the front lines, play two songs, move back to the mages, play two more songs, and so it repeats. Maybe tossing a faux requiem in there somewhere on the enemy, but really, who cares? At endgame, they started sleep pulling, which was probably a ton of fun, but that was 74 long levels away from level 1. I go into all this detail to lead up to this point. A bard could show up to your party naked, and you wouldn't turn them away. Hell, they'd probably still be more useful than that pup throwing millions into automaton attachments. Poor pup, no matter what they do. So when I go into the artifact armor, uh, from the outset, remember that they could wear absolutely nothing but a burlap sack, and they would still get more invites than I did. So how was their artifact? Well, hopefully pretty good, because I remember seeing people full-time in this all over the place. But for the life of me, before doing work for this video, I couldn't have told you a damn thing about it. I honestly can't remember any of the stats even a little bit. I just looked over and it looks pretty solid. Looks like they did make them work for at least a little bit though, with Castles of All Baileys and Castle Astrosia. Although Crawler's Nest is the third option there, does kind of make up for both of those. Crawler's Nest is so easy. So let's kick it off. First we have the Coral Slippers, probably the most useless piece in the group. I'm not sure what poor soul was poking things to death as Bard Solo Pre-75, <laughs> But that's about the only reason I could think to use these invasion enhancing, agility boosting uh, slippers. It's kind of weird. But moving on, uh, next we have the hat, uh, the mushroom cap, the poof, whatever you want to call it. The thing is hilarious looking. With plus three mind, that's useful for, uh, I guess, cures with some white mage. But what bard would lower themselves to curing anybody in the party is beyond me. The minus one enmity, it's, it's not the worst piece you could have, but eh. Chances are, most bards have gotten the noble's ribbon plus one at level 14 and never looked back. Next though, we've got the pants, uh, where stuff actually starts to get kind of interesting. Plus three wind instrument skill and minus one enemy. I can't think of anything off the top of my head that, that would trump it at level 56. Bards, let me know if I'm wrong. And I know this only affected wind instruments, but still that seems pretty awesome. And regardless, refer back to my naked bard story. It didn't matter. The strand of usefulness continues with the body with plus three string instrument skill and another minus one enemy. I can't remember which spells tied effectively to which instrument. I know you played some clarinets and there were some harps involved. I'm pretty sure both came into play at some point during your leveling experience. So both of these pieces sound pretty good. Closing it off though are the gloves, which are, wow, I mean, pretty solid. Plus four charisma, the only stats Bard ever cared about. So that's pretty cool. And plus five singing skill, which just directly improves both sides of that track. And even the naked bars I mentioned are out there with no instrument at all. <laughs> They'd see the benefit. Now I'm just picturing like literally somebody naked but with that hat. <laughs> like barding like. That was my bard song impression. It also just had a little teensy bit of minus enmity as the cherry on top. Bars probably wore these for quite a bit. I, I mean, as goofy as they'd look, I'd wear them. But that's enough about Bard. Bard got tons of attention for years. We're moving on to one of the more requested jobs actually on this channel, which is hilarious because no one requested this job for parties, right? Right. I mean, let's just talk for a second about the fact that it was built mostly on the fact that it could sub white mage and cast cure threes a lot. That's how the invites rolled in, if they ever rolled in. I wouldn't have made it past level 50 if I couldn't build parties myself. Truly an ode to the greatness of the job and all the Final Fantasy games before it, this was the life of the summoner. Now, summoner is one of my favorite jobs in Final Fantasy XI. Seriously, like one of my favorites, and one of my favorite pet jobs in any MMO ever. I loved how they handled the pets. Don't let anyone tell you differently, because I just told you. I don't know who's going to tell you differently. Why do we say that? But Summoner did struggle quite a bit on the party front, uh, with blood packs coming only once a minute, at least pre-update, 
and costing a ton of MP. And the avatars themselves were always far too expensive in a party to keep out dealing damage consistently. Sonar was a weird, not very good damage dealer, not great buffer, not great healer, not really great anything. Now where it did excel was hate-free damage, uh, kiting, and having a disposable damage buffer for yourself. But none of these things were very useful for grouping, but we made it work. You of course could make it work a lot easier if you had Fenrir, who at least had an accuracy buff with Lunar Howl and a straight up boost to your stats with Lunar Growl. But it couldn't come anywhere near the effectiveness of Bard buffs. I mean, it was just like, decent. You could throw out some Haskas with Garuda and uh, maybe some Earthen War to protect against damage with Titan. Nice AoE stone skin. It was really cool. Just cost a ton of MP. Plus Fenrir was like super tough to get. I mean you had to beat all the level 65 avatar fights just to get the Moon Bobble to even fight him. Meaning if you were level 30 and your highest job was Summoner, like me, you were just shit out of luck. I didn't get him until I was level 60 and I had to pay five other summoners, like 100k each, to help me with the Fender fight, which itself was a super tough fight. It's the only time in MMO I've had, I've had no shame for paying for that fight. Like that was like a well accepted, like you want Fenrir, you will pay. There was also just a ridiculous amount of fame you had to build up in each of the cities just to get to the fights. It was, it was just a lot. Now, Summoner also introduced the solo fights, the level 20 version of the Avatar battles that you had to do solo. They were some of the most rewarding and intense experiences I've ever had in MMO at such a low level. I will literally never forget them. Just getting the job was hard. You had to randomly get a Carbuncle's Ruby from like some leech, any leech, anywhere. And then visit like all the types of weather. You had to get all the weather. You had to like shove the Carbuncle's Ruby like up into the rain, up into the heat, this death storm, death storm. Dirt. Earth. Windy storm? That's a thing. Wind. It took forever. But once you finished and you summoned Carbuncle for the first time, he just like popped out of the ground a little backflip and he's like, ha oh ho! It was, it was just so worth it. So I was often pretty torn on Summoner because on one hand, amazingly unique job with a literally gotta catch them all mentality, super awesome lore, and man, if you could get it to 75, some serious doors opened up for you. Wow, but that was, uh, that was quite a ramble. So sorry, Summoner. So cool, but the artifact. Uh, what does this all mean for the artifact? What is the situation of like so hard to get to 60, but once you did, the artifact made it all worth it? Well, yes and, and no. Does it look awesome? And will you truly feel like a summoner once you obtained it, risking life and limb? And oh my god, do I mean that? Because summoner had to go to Sea Serpent's Grotto, whatever, this is the crawler's nest of the Zillard expansion. Who cares? But then Taramari Canal. Oh my god, what cruelty Taramari Canal was. Most people can't even get into this zone on their own. It had a door that required a white mage, red mage, and black mage to open. Guess which one of those three mages is a summoner? None. Luckily I had a key item that let me get in from like the Winder's missions that I did, but that was like a 30% chance that you did Winder's and not Bastok or Dendoria. That's just mean, it's just mean. Once you got inside, it, it was just all skeletons and bats and slimes. Hell, you were, you were happy to run into bugles just to know what you were dealing with. And that was the easy zone. <laughs> if you got past that, then it was Temple of Ugaleb. I already ranted about Temple of Ugaleb on the Sam video, but for good reason, that place is a hellhole of locked doors and one-shotting, throat-stabbing Donberry monsters. Ugh. And yes, my coffer was behind the prelate door, by the way. I had to go get that damn stupid key from something else after I got my key to get through the stupid door. Ugh. God, I hate Temple of Ugla. I checked every other spot, and it wasn't there, and I finally glitched my camera through, and I was like, there it is, back there. Oh my god, I gotta go get that stupid key. But, uh, wow, that got me kind of emotional. Enough ranting about the difficulties of leveling Summoner and obtaining gear for it. Seriously though, Square Enix, why did you hate Summoner so much? The artifact was totally worth it, right? Wrong. Most of this shit sucked. Uh, the other stuff was good, but only because Summoner was, was just weird, and <laughs> there was like nothing out there better. There really wasn't any way to make the job better through gear before 75. I mean, most of the stuff you'd wear was just plus MP gear because it was your best option. So little affected the strength of your avatars or the cheapness of their continued cost. Uh, so let's just get into the good, the bad, and the ugly of the Evoker set. So right off the bat, we start with the spats. And I, I'm not getting when I say you'll wear these until you upgrade them or get the relic. Uh, the plus avatar accuracy was just super sweet. And there really isn't much to compete against them throughout the game, which is good because these green bell bottoms look pretty sweet. 
Unfortunately, they lead right into the gloves, possibly one of the worst pieces of gear in the game. I mean, unless you were fighting some sort of only cast thunder magic and decided you wanted to use Rama against that, which doesn't really make any sense. Trying to take advantage of that MP conversion, and the minus enmity on the avatars was actually a detriment to your success. It tended to make whatever you were fighting more interested in killing you than your summon. Rarely is there a piece of artifact that is truly a detriment to the cause, but I, I think these gloves might be it. Likely trying to make up for their mistake, the big ashes were next, and at least taking away from the right enmity, yours, and enhancing avatar evasion, improving soloing summoners' chances everywhere. On top of that, and I normally don't get into the upgrades, but the plus one versions of these that you can get from Limbus was one of the few pieces of the gear in the game that lowered perpetuation costs by another point, at which point they were a permanent fixture in my Tarutar, even though they pretty much were before too. Unfortunately, it kind of just goes downhill after that, with the body being essentially useless no matter how cool it looks. Which was fine, because you were probably wearing the austere body for the minus prone perpetuation anyway, but Summer was one of those jobs where there was basically one piece of gear for like... 30 levels that you wore. And the austere robe was it. In fact, I wore a 75 because that yin robe was really tough to get. The Vermilion's Cloak was better for the, the refresh instead of the minus perpetuation, but it didn't have the blood pack timer down, and it was super expensive. The Horn at least got a little more useful at the big summoner update of 09. I'm just kidding, I don't remember what year it was, but 09 sounded way better. Uh, but before that, summoning magic basically was like useless. There was no point to level it. After the update, it totally affected damage, accuracy, magic damage, magic accuracy for all of your avatars, like you would expect it to. <laughs> but if you had the austere hat before or after the update, you'd probably pick that for the decreased blood pack timer. But I'm glad at least it's more useful than it was before, back when I leveled Summoner. And that is Summoner, my uh, my favorite carby kiting, predator clawing, Fenrir fighting job, uh, a job that truly helped make Final Fantasy XI what it was for me. I loved Summoner, I could never get enough of it. Anyways, let me know in the comments which of these jobs is your favorite, especially if you leveled one. And always throw me right under the bus and correct me uh, if I didn't get how valuable a piece of artifact armor was and totally said it was shit. Also, just as a side note, I'm trying to introduce more casual videos each week about like gaming news and other fun stuff going on. Unscripted, very lately edited, so don't expect the Mona Lisa film here, but uh, should be a fun new way to kick off the week each week. Check them out on Tuesdays at, uh, at like lunchtime. And if you haven't yet, take a look at my Nintendo Switch impressions uh, that came out earlier this week. Rumor is they might port Final Fantasy XIV to this thing, so that'd be pretty sweet, but somebody ask for Final Fantasy XI and see if we can get it on there. Just kidding, I don't even think Play Online could run on that thing. It's got such specific needs. Anyways, as always, thanks for hanging out till the end, and uh, I'll see you guys next week. As always, guys, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, you should totally think about subscribing. I've got videos coming out twice a week, and if you like this one, there's at least a chance you'll like some of the others that are very similar to this, so live dangerously. Let me know what you guys thought about the video in the comments and other videos you'd like to see. And finally, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Hunting for Games to keep up with all the latest stuff. See ya!